Hi everyone, welcome to Jan's Family Table. Today, a recipe for a classic European style bread that most of you know as baguettes. Long, crusty bread with soft, chewy center and deep, complex flavor. If you want to know how to make these easily at home without any special equipment, then let's go! This traditional bread is actually very easy to make and requires no kneading at all. Just mix regular all-purpose flour with salt, instant yeast, and water. And that's it! You just need a few simple things and some technique to turn these basic ingredients into something special. Start the mixing with your spatula, but at one point you'll need to get your hands in it. What I like to do here is to squeeze the dough in my palm and through my fingers to work all of the flour in. Once no more dry flour remains, you'll end up with a very sticky mess. That's okay. Keep mixing until the dough begins to take form. At this point, it will be very sticky like glue, so use something to scrape it off your hands and leave it to rest covered. After the initial 30 minutes, we will need to stretch the currently limp and shapeless dough to develop and strengthen the gluten. To do that, get some water and wet your hands thoroughly. Then start stretching by pulling parts of the dough up and folding it over itself. The first few times, the dough will be very easy to stretch, so repeat this move over and over until the dough starts to resist back. Then I like to use both my hands to kind of lift and let gravity stretch the dough for me, making sure to fold it onto itself each time. Finally, form it into a tightish, smoothish ball and leave it again to rest cover for 30 minutes. Do the second round of stretching the same way after about 30 minutes and you'll end up with the dough with well-developed gluten structures. This stretching process takes about two to three minutes each time, but it's just the beginning. This is now going to go in the fridge overnight or even up to 24 hours to slowly ferment and rise. The slow fermentation process not only allows the gluten structures to fully develop and strengthen, but it's also imperative for flavor. The complex flavor of any artisanal bread comes from these long, slow fermentation. The next day, take it out of the fridge, turn it onto a table, with a light dusting of flour. You don't need to punch out the air too much like many of my other bread recipes. Here, we would like to maintain a lot of the bubbles within the bread. So just pull it out a bit and divide into two equal pieces. Cover these and let it rest for 10 minutes. When you come back, it's time to shape the baguettes. Sprinkle small amounts of flour as needed so the dough is easier to work with. Make dimples all over with your fingers and start rolling it lengthwise. Push the seams down as you go to create tension and make the roll as tight as you can. Then pinch the ends to close. Finally, roll with both hands so the baguette is thick in the middle and tapers off on the ends. I made two baguettes that measure about 35 to 40 centimeters long, which fits the longest pan that I have to bake these in my oven. If you have smaller pans or a smaller oven, make three or four smaller, shorter baguettes instead. Now, get your baking tray and line it with some parchment paper. You'll want to rip a longer piece than the size of your pan because we're going to be rolling it. Spread a thin layer of flour to prevent sticking and gently lay one of the baguettes on it. Then roll up the paper to create a barrier and repeat the process with the next baguette. As my pan is wider, I like to use a couple of rolled up kitchen towels to secure the breads. 
This is not essential, but it does encourage the baguettes to stay in this shape as they rise. Dust the tops with some more flour and then cover with a plastic wrap or a towel or both like you're tucking a baby to bed. Then leave it to rise for about 30 minutes. While your bread is resting, preheat your oven to 482 degrees Fahrenheit or 250 degrees Celsius. Although you don't need any special baking equipment for making baguettes at home, you do need a few everyday items to help the process. Namely, a spray bottle and a very sharp blade or a knife. I have this thing called lame that is specially used for scoring bread in an oven-proof dish that can withstand high temperatures. After 30 minutes, wake up your babies and unwrap them carefully. I like to cut off the excess paper instead of removing them from underneath as not to disturb the bread. But if you're feeling confident, go for it and remove the paper altogether. And to get that classic baguette look as well as to allow the breads to rise efficiently in the oven, score the tops with the blade with short diagonal strokes. Be quick and decisive with your movement to get the cleanest cuts. Then spray the tops of the bread with water. Be generous as this water will create the steam that we want when it hits the hot oven. Another thing we can do to create steam is to pour some boiling water in the oven proof dish and put it underneath the bread. And one last thing, spray a ton of water into the oven before closing the door. This last burst of water will create steam that is essential for making crusty French breads like baguettes. Bake this at a high temperature for 20 minutes after which, lower the temperature to 425 Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius. Take out the water bath and rotate the tray so you can get even browning. And bake for another five minutes or so. And there you have it. A tasty French baguette made at home with minimal effort and equipment. The outside is crusty, crunchy, and chewy and the inside is flavorful and moist. Eat it as is with some butter or jam, or make your favorite sandwich. Mine is the classic BLT, bacon, lettuce, and tomato, with tons of mayo. This bread is so good that any filling would be amazing between it. Try it today, you won't be disappointed. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like or comment below. I love to hear from you. And as always, go to yansfamilytable.com for the full written recipe. Subscribe to my channel for more recipes like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.